Everything we do in stem cell biology is about putting cells back into patients to help them regenerate lost function. Uh, that's really not possible without the groundbreaking work that Paul Terasaki did over a 40-year period, and, and proud to say done here at UCLA. Uh, his work defined really how we can measure and understand what we call our histocompatibility antigens, and whether a tissue from one individual would be a match for another, used today in solid organ transplantation and other systems. Um, his work really was groundbreaking in allowing us to think about that problem and all of what we're doing now in stem cell biology is really guided by his efforts. So it's a special pleasure to have our CIRM sponsored space within the Terasaki building. We have a variety of groups going from the very uh, most basic aspects of stem cell research right up to clinical translational projects uh, as well as some innovative core laboratories where many people from all over campus will come and do experiments in the context of our, our, our research space. Uh, it's all about bringing new people together in a new context. Research doesn't progress solely uh, by building more square footage. Uh, that's an essential component, uh, but it certainly progresses more when you bring smart people into the right environment together. And we've got a range of people uh, using a variety of different disciplines and taking different approaches to a common problem, uh, which is how to exploit the value of stem cells to build new therapies in medicine. The new labs are going to enable us to accelerate the pace with which we carry out many of our projects. Uh, currently, uh, we're scattered around campus in a wide number of buildings. Uh, this will provide a permanent home for our stem cell activities. Uh, essential core services will be done in this space, and it also gives us the opportunity to recruit new faculty members into uh, the best space on campus. One of the most difficult things in science now is amassing all of the critical core technologies that you need to accomplish the goals you set out to achieve. And in order to do that, we decided to put some of the newest and most expensive core technologies all together in this new space. Scientists from all over campus, in fact, the larger community, can access these facilities if they don't have them available in their own building or their own site. Uh, included among them are advanced techniques in culture of human embryonic stem cells and iPS cells. That'll be available. Uh, new technologies for the genetic introduction of material into cells to modify how they work. Uh, and a very large effort uh, in computational biology, uh, the use of computers to teach us what massive amounts of data can reduce to in a biological sense. Uh, particularly excited uh, by our efforts in engineering the immune system to fight cancer. We're using that currently in trials uh, to treat melanoma patients, uh, but planning on expanding that in the area of prostate cancer and ovarian cancer over time, uh, where we think we have a good chance to change the outcome for those patients. Uh, quite a, a lot of progress in the area of um, treatments for HIV uh, and also um, ge other uh, genetic diseases. Uh, and I think what you're going to see over time is that the technologies that we develop will become more and more useful in more uh, in, in varied areas of medicine. My hope for the future of the Stem Cell Center uh, is that we don't think of it um, as simply the acquisition of additional square footage or another grant under our belt but we think about it in terms of what we've done to affect um, the human condition, how people with terrible diseases can now face a future with some hope for a new type of therapy uh, rather than relying on the medicine of the past. Uh, that's what I think about, that's what my faculty colleagues think about, and I know we'll be thinking a lot about that in the new space in the Terrasaki Building.